Hi everyone, Spider-Man1991 here to do my comics for the week. Alright, this, originally I only intended to get two comics, but since I didn't feel, I felt like reading something extra, I was originally going to pick up Detective Comics 871 to see how that was, but unfortunately the comic book store sold out, but I might try to get it next week, so instead I bought the first issue of Ant-Man and Wasp. Okay, this is your typical kind of odd couple type deal where you've got the class clown and the smart guy, smart serious guy. But pretty much, and pretty much while Hank and O'Grady are pretty different, they pretty much want the same thing, which is to leave a better legacy. Because right now we have Hank Pym, Hank Pym, aka the Wasp, talking about filming a commercial for. He, for the center for center Jan Van Dyne centers for women that he's building that he's building in honor of his late wife Jan Jan the former wasp and Erica Brady we have here who's still going through one night stands and trying but trying to get his old girlfriend back which is very unfortunate and meanwhile while O'Grady is visiting Pim he he tries to tell him that AIM is after one of his inventions but Pim doesn't listen, so O'Grady gets drunk, passes out in the Avengers Academy, and all of a sudden some sort of sleep entity comes out of O'Grady's mind and steals his invention. And when steals his invention for A AIM, and then Pim and Pim gets O'Grady to come with him, and Pim says he's gonna go and figure it out. And he reveals that the invention he has is somehow storing all the latent brainwaves of Bill Foster in a sort of heavenly utopia that he created. And as AIM is modifying the device, they're they are pretty much going to, in a way, destroy Bill Foster's soul. So then Hank says he's going to be go. He has a device that'll allow him and to, him and one other person enter the mindscape. So, and O'Grady says he wants to go with him because he doesn't want to leave a bad legacy, which gets Hank to thinking. And so they, he decides to take him with me. And so the team of Ant Man and the Wasp goes off. All right, not a bad kickoff to a good, not a bad kickoff. Um, I do want to read the rest of this mini series because this month Hank Pym is supposed to be switching back to his Giant Man identity, so I don't. So maybe this series might explain will be pretty much be his final tale as the Wasp. And I've enjoyed Hank Pym as the Wasp since Mighty Avengers, so I'm kind of hoping that this put puts him in a sort of heroic state of awesome action and everything. Okay, and I'm definitely going to pick up the rest of this miniseries, which is ironic because the n next issue, number two, came out this week, but I went to the comic book store, and I figured that out right after I got back, but I didn't see the issue anywhere, so irony. All right, moving right along, time for DC. Brightest Day, number 15, with the title, Whatever Happened to the Mar Manhunter from Mars? All right, we open up on Mars, where all the Martians have gathered to honor John Jones who's now a Green Lantern and all the all the founding members of the Justice League have gotten older and they're there to celebrate John, John's anniversary of when Mars has returned to life and stuff. So basically brute and pretty much it's just all just the league and John catching up catching up and he's and John's kind of living in a utopian state. But then he discovers that Batman's dead and he discovers pearl bullets which are sort of special, which only the founding members of the Justice League would get, and Batman was trying to write a, write a scrawling message, dying message in his own blood. And then it's revealed that the other members of the Justice League are dead, dead all except for Superman. And John and his daughter are able to find Superman, but he's alive, but barely because he has a kryptonite death mask. So John takes, takes Superman off the planet to recharge his body. And he and Clark, and Superman and John have a discussion about about how super about how they're both the last of their species, but there's a difference that Clark Clark came to Earth as a baby and he had no memory of Krypton, so he could start fresh. John didn't. He still remembers having to bury every single Martian from when his race died, and so he says he doesn't agree with Clark and kills Superman with a kryptonite dagger. And then he looks at the bodies, and they're the symbols, Martian symbols of hate and love. And then John realizes that this world isn't real, and it's actually that evil Martian decay who is controlling his mind. And 
And our last bit here is Firestorm coming to the Justice League for help on ha having to defeat Deathstorm. Okay. Brightest Day number 15. Um, well, it's kind of a spotlight on Martian Manhunter. It's not bad. It's, it's not really bad. It's entertaining, but not really essential. But it seems like they stretched out the plot a bit too much, though. I mean, I do like the title. I do like whatever happened to whatever this hero was stories. And it was pretty interesting seeing what would happen if that thing John did last a couple of issues back where he revived all life on Mars if that actually worked, what his life would have been like. But that's not the case. And we're back in the present. And good cliffhanger with Firestorm because I want to see how, the, how that works out. And, okay, once again, Bryce Day only caters to... This issue only caters to a certain group of fans. So only get this if you're either a fan of the... If you're just a fan of the Martian Manhunter. All right. Moving right along for the final comic. Adventure Comics 521. Now the Legion story is set in the current timeline, which is after post Legion of Three Worlds, so everything's in the present, and the little dial diagene thing has returned to finally make its choice about who should be the new Green Lantern. Basically we got Legion saving the day day and stuff, and then the Diogene gathers the Legion together so that they can vote so that they so that he can pretty much choose who who to be the new, which can be the new Green Lantern. And I'm not going to give that away, because it's really, because the choice is kind of obvious, well, no, it's not obvious, it's it's kind of a surprise about who gets the ring, and it's someone you'll be happy to know, but I'm not going to give it away, so I did like the choice, though. Alright, moving right along to the Adam Co. feature, the Adam Co. feature, uh, they were last attacked by giant bugs, and... Ray and Dave Palmer was able to disable them while he and his nephew, the Adam, repair, used the parts to repair their belts so that they can teleport and return to their original size out of the sort of little mini dimension land called the Ant Form that Dave invented, just to be sort of a backup file to Earth. And both of them are successfully able to repair their belts and get out of the Ant Form, but the Adam tells Ray, tells I'm sorry, Dave to get get ready to teleport out of there, but Dave doesn't want to leave his invention, so they get taken over by the Covenant, and then they tell tell Ray Palmer to hand over his white dwarf star matter, and he says hell no, but then they say, but then they reveal that he either gives them the white mat dwarf matter or they kill his dad who's in a coma, and now it says to be continued in Adams. In the Adam special number two in March. Okay. So, Adventure Comics. Next issue, it's going to be right now. This is three ninety nine, but next month it will be down to two ninety nine, and the Adam Co. feature will be dropped, so it will be all Legion, but it will feature the Green Lantern of the thirty first century, who I'm not going to, who I have to try not to give away. But okay, as far as the issue itself, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the choice of, as I said, I've enjoyed the choice of the Green Lantern. The right, I think they made the right choice with who the new Green Lantern should be. And the Adam Co. feature, I'm kind of enjoying it. It's sort of great. And what else do I have to say? Uh, definitely looking forward to the Adam feature, which will be in, which will be out in March, though. But I think that's kind of a long time to wait for it. In March, they couldn't have done it next month, but... Oh well, and I'm also glad that DC's going to reduce the price on this to two ninety nine, because that's just great. Okay, so quick little recap: Adventure Comics five twenty one. Get it if you're either a Green Lantern fan or a Legion fan or an Adam fan. Okay, Bryce Day number fifteen, Martian Man Hunter fans only, and Ant Man and Wasp. If you've loved Hank Pym or if you love Eric O'Grady, then I would recommend getting this for getting this because they're both interesting characters, okay? And that's all I have to say. Spider-Man 1991 saying, see you later.